Anyone who is using Home Assistant knows that there is an energy monitoring section in Home Assistant. Today we will be looking on how you can improve it, yet still keep the same theme. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Home Assistant out of box has Energy tab or Energy Dashboard, and this dashboard allows you to track your energy usage. Besides that, you can also monitor your solar production or if you have, for example, wind production and how much of the power is used by your home or devices and see if the grid is providing power to you or you are using power from solar or batteries. Besides that, we also have water and gas monitoring. But what if you want to create a custom awesome energy dashboard that is inspired by this one, but it is completely different. For that, you have to go to settings dashboards and create new dashboard. This one here is called Awesome Energy and I've created it by clicking on Add Dashboard, giving it a title, selecting an icon and I've decided that all users can see it so this admin only is not ticked. After you have created the new dashboard, go to it, click on three dots, edit dashboard, start it to empty dashboard, take control. The dashboard that you've seen a couple of seconds ago was automatically created dashboard out of all of the entities I have in my home assistant. But instead, we are going to create our own dashboard. For this, let's first check home assistant documentation. Energy cards is something that you do not see in the list of the cards available in the UI. But you can add each and every one of them by copying the examples in this case. This one is energy date selection. And that's the upper tab here that allows you to select specific dates, times, weeks, months, etc. Then we have energy usage graph, solar production graph, gas consumption graph, water consumption, energy distribution, energy sources, grid neutrality, solar consumed, carbon consumed, self-sufficiency, and device energy graph. Let me quickly copy this all in Home Assistant. And this is how the dashboard would look if we would just copy everything that we can and create a custom dashboard out of energy cards. First thing at the top corner is the ability to control the data on display. And then we can scroll the dates here, click the date to return, see the weekly information, monthly information and yearly information. Next, we can see the information about the total power consumed, in this case, this is today's date with the off-peak power usage and on-peak power usage. Next, we have information about the solar power production. Of course, if you have solar panels and this graph also shows you the expected or simulated or forecasted solar production. Next, we have self-sufficiency quota. This one tells you how much of the overall total power consumed we are producing via the solar panels. Next one is energy distribution. Energy distribution shows us how much of the overall power consumption, currently 8.4 kilowatt hours, is produced from the solar, how much is pulled from the grid, and out of that what is pulled from the grid, how much of the power is low carbon produced power. Then we have information about the energy sources. This here is total solar power. For example, you can have two solar arrays or solar and wind array, etc. And this is the total for everything that your home has produced. The below information is the information about the grid total power pooled from off-peak and the on-peak power. We already mentioned low carbon energy consumption. This is again percentage of total power pooled from the grid. How much is from the low carbon sources? In my case, since I don't have batteries in my home, grid neutrality could not be calculated. Also, self-consumed solar energy couldn't be calculated because I'm never producing more power than I'm actually consuming. Everything that I produce, I consume myself. That's why I have a bit of value. Two additional graphs unfortunately cannot be seen in my system because there is no way for me currently to track water. There are no water meters in my apartment. And the second one I still haven't tackled, that is the gas consumption or how much gas my home is using. That is project I hope to tackle soon. And the last graph here shows us the power consumption based on either rooms or specific devices. For example, by the rooms, kitchen, Luca, Zita, dining room, living room, loft, 
and then I have information for the devices, for example, dishwasher, my data center, or where all my IT equipment and network equipment is, AC, washing machine, 3D printer, etc. And this is all pretty standard. But what if we want to just a little bit more expand on this functionality? First thing that I would tackle is this one here. It allows me to look at days, weeks, months, years, today, but I cannot select a date range. For that, we have to install one HACS Loveless integration. In HACS, go to Frontend, click on three dots, Custom Repositories, and paste the link Energy Period Selector Plus. Category is Lovelace and click on Add. Don't worry, the link to it will be down in the video description. You should see in the Custom Repositories list something like this, Energy Period Selector Plus. Next, in Explore and Download Repositories, type Energy and install Energy Period Selector Plus. This is a custom HACS Lovelace component that allows us to tweak this upper bar here. Click on Download, Download, Reload and this should be it. Now let's go to our awesome dashboard, click on three dots, add a dashboard, add card. The things that makes this card much better than the original one is, well, actually you can customize it. For example, you can customize the card background, you can show or hide previous and next buttons, these ones here. Compare button can be either icon or text. You can create your own label. Today button can also be text or icon, or you can completely hide it. For period buttons, you can leave everything as is, but also you can remove, for example, week and year, and also you can create custom ranges. If we compare the original and the new card, we can see that there are differences. And maybe the best functionality is this custom functionality. It allows you to select a range of dates and see energy consumption, production or everything related to the energy dashboard for that specific range, which by itself is really awesome functionality. But that's not all. Once again, in HACS frontend, click on Explore, type Power and install PowerFlow Card Plus. This integration should be automatically part of the HACS, so you do not have to add any external repositories. Click on Download, Download and Reload. In our dashboard, once again, click on three dots, Edit Dashboard, Add Card, type Power and we will install PowerFlow Card Plus. And if I play a bit with my settings, this is how it may end up looking. If we compare it with the previous or original one, you can see that there are a bit of a difference here. For example, since this is a power card, I have here information about my electric M365 scooter that is currently being charged, solar production, information about my home consumption, how much I'm pulling out from the grid, and out of all of that that is pulled from the grid, how much is non-fossil fuel or low carbon emissions produced fuel. And I have also added the battery information, although my home doesn't have a battery, I've pulled here data from my UPS, so that I know that my UPS is currently 100% charged, which doesn't help my home, but it does help me in the event that the power goes down for my network and the data center. Once again, the link to this repository will be also in the video description, so go check it out because there are tons and tons of options for you to customize your card. I will definitely not be going through all of them. Also note one thing, this is energy flow, this is power flow. This is telling us how much of the energy was consumed and this is telling us how much power it is consuming right now. But what if, for example, you want something like this, but for the energy? There is also option to do that. Go to HACS, frontend, three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL and the URL will be down in the video description. It is energy-flow-card-plus. Select category Lovelace and add. When you add it, you will see it in the list of custom repositories. This Hex Energy Flow Card Plus is, as I mentioned, similar to the distribution card in the Home Assistant. This one is also tracking energy. Click on Download, Download and Reload. Same as the power card, this one can also be heavily customized. 
and it's also mentioning that you should install Power Flow Card Plus, which we did previously, to customize the dates, times, and how this selector looks like. And for the entities, we can track the energy for the grid, solar battery, to individual devices, home, and once again, fossil fuel percentage. And if we customize it, this should now look like this. This is the original energy distribution, and this is our current energy distribution card. We can see how much power was pulled from the grid, 9 kilowatt hours, how much has been produced by the solar power, 173 watt hours, how much has been pulled by my scooter today, 37.5 watt hours, and total consumption from my home was 9 kilowatt hours. There are a lot of other options that you can play with, but I will not be going through everything here. These simple hacks, integrations, or Lovelace components are maybe everything that you need to improve on your energy dashboards. There is actually one additional card, but I will not be showing you that card today because I've already recorded video on it when I was doing an overview of all the things that can produce graphs in HEX or HSES. The link to that video is up here, and that one is called Sunkey card. Let me quickly paste it here. If Sunkey is properly configured, and I've just seen I had two mistakes here, you can have overview of total power consumption in your home and then divide it by either devices or rooms, or both rooms and then devices in those rooms. This can give you a quick overview of what is actually drawing most of the power currently in your home. Out of 543 watts that my home is currently drawing from the grid, 169 goes towards this setup here. 163 watts goes towards my data center, then I have 23 watts for the scooter charger and 24 watts for the load power. But even without that Sunkey card, we still have here overview of all our power, how our energy and power is used and towards what rooms or devices it goes in our home. Just for the information, I'm tracking power usage in my home via the Shelly EM that is installed inside the fuse box and most of the individual devices or rooms or entities that are tracked for power consumption has been tracked by either PowerCalc, the link to that video will be up here, or I'm using something like a Shelly Plug S. The link to the Shelly Plug S will be down in the video description. I hope that you did find this video interesting and I hope to produce more videos about the awesome hacks, integrations and components. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It not just means a lot to me, but it really helps with the YouTube algorithms. Of course, comments are more than welcome. And before I wrap up, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. Let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my videos. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or you can go to my merchandise store and buy something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.